Hello, Assalamu alaikum. We are going to perform multi group analysis on our existing model. So, there are three steps in performing the multi group analysis. Step one, we'll create the groups. Step two, we'll perform the MyCom. And as a third step, we are going to perform the MGA. So, let's move on to the first step. This is my model over here, and the data that I'm using for it is over here. I'll double click this data. Now, once I'm on the data tab, I'll have to create generate data groups. So I'll click on this. Now it will ask me, what do you, what do I want my group to be named as? So I would name it as a YouTube watching frequency, or you could say YouTube watch. So this is the name of the group. Now it would ask me that which column do I want? I have a parameter here. Uh, which is here, YouTube Watch 2. It has two unique groups. It's giving me over here that it has two unique groups. I'll select that. And next, I'll just click OK. Now, it has generated two different groups out of my data. I will name these groups. I'll click Edit, and I'll call the first one, uh, the one that has value 1. It's giving me in parenthesis. I'll call them frequent users. Then as group two, I would want to edit their names and I would want to call this group to be infrequent users. So now we are done with our step one that have, we have created two different groups out of our data. And uh, some of the respondents are categorized as frequent users, and some of them are categorized as infrequent users. So now the next step, we'll go back to our model. We'll go to Calculate. And we will click on this uh, option that is called Permutation. Now we'll click Permutation. It would ask us that which two different groups do we want here. I want the frequent users and the infrequent users to come over here. And how many permutations? You can leave it to 1,000. But because I'm testing my hypothesis, that is one-tailed. So I'm going to click select the one-tailed one. And nothing else needs to be changed here. Uh, maybe you can just check that it is on factors. If it's not, then bring it back to the factors. Otherwise, everything would remain same. And just start and click on calculation. It won't take. All right. So here are the permutation results. But you won't be able to see the MyCom like that. You just have to click the down arrow here. And right at the bottom within this column that is called quality criteria, you would see MyCom here. You need to click here. Now, what do we need to see in these results? I'll let you know over here. Now, when you're performing MyCom, you need to fulfill, or you need to, when you're performing MGA, you need to fulfill three criteria, and uh, they are that your configurational uh, invariant should be there. It means that the model that you're using for one group should be the same as the model that you're using for the other group which is by default the same because you are performing the MyCom on one model. So it is automatically satisfied. You don't need to do anything for the first requirement. Now for the measurement invariance of composites. Now the composites are basically the latent variables. Uh, you, the second condition is compositional invariance. Now for the compositional invariance, we need to check this step two over here within the MyCom which says that your in, uh, original correlation should be same as the permutational uh, value, or you could say the correlation here. The requirement over here is that your p-value should be more than 0 0.05. Now, for only one variable, I have it is as less than 0 0.05. But this is ignorable for me because I'm not using this variable within my model. My variables that I'm using within the model are the other ones. 
PAV, PAEN, PAAIN, and the interaction uh, term that I have because I'm using peer as a moderator. So peer itself is not significant for me, but the interaction term is significant. So I would ignore this. So I would, I would declare that as a step two, the compositional invariance also exists. All right. So that is the second step of my com. The third step of my com is that you need to check whether the mean value and the variance value of all the factors is same. Now here I have means as same. The mean difference is uh, it has the p value or the permutation value that is like it's rejecting that hypothesis that the means are same. The means are not same. Like uh, so, we are we are we are good on the means level, but in terms of the variance, I have two two problematic values. The the probability of the two variance as being same it is not there, so uh, that would be rejected, and we'll reject that criteria. If you look at the criteria over here, these are the three criteria. Two of my criteria are fulfilled. Criteria one, configurational invariance, that is satisfied because I'm using the same model. The second criteria that there is no measurement invariance like the uh, the, con uh, the correlation of the groups is same, that is true. But I don't have the equal mean and equal variance clause fulfilled. That the mean and the variance of both the values, both the categories are different. So I will go for the partial measurement invariance. We can still run the MGA according to this uh, text, but uh, we would call it par partial measurement invariance uh, comparison. So the MICOM is performed and the, cat the requirements are fulfilled. If two of your requirements, step one and step two are fulfilled, you can go for the MG analysis. So my step one and step two are fulfilled. I'm going on for the third, third step, um, the last portion in my MGA that is multi-group analysis. So I'll click on the model one again and I'll go for calculate. I'll go for multi-group analysis here. And I'll click that multi-group analysis. And ask me that which groups do I want to compare with each other. So I will compare the frequent users with, sorry, I don't want this, with the infrequent users. Okay. All right, so I'm comparing my frequent users with the infrequent users, the two groups that I have, and I'll start the calculation. Just before starting the calculation, just have a look at the partially square bootstrapping. Everything is fine. It's one-tailed, complete bootstrapping. That's all what I needed. So I'll move on towards my calculation. So finally, we have our output over here. And uh, this is what it's going to show us over here. So these are the path labels. These are the path coefficient differences. And these are the p-values related to those path coefficient differences. The values that are in green, they are showing us that, yes, there is, there is a difference that that is present over there between the two groups. And the ones that are in red, they are the paths where there's no difference. You can even confirm it over here in the bootstrapping results. 
like it, it will show you the path coefficient of the frequent frequent users and the path coefficients of infrequent users so you would see it like you know yourself also that the path coefficient for the frequent user is quite different from the path coefficient for the infrequent users and that's why it's giving you the value in green that yes there is a difference and the p value of one of the group is significant while the other group it's insignificant so you can confirm your understanding from this table also but the main results they are over here now the p values that are less than 0 0.05 these are the ones where the path coefficient for these different groups the two groups that you have created are different and the ones where you have the red p values or p values greater than 0.05 there's no difference between the two groups. Now, these are my path coefficients, and I can also check my specific indirect effects over here. Same rules would apply. So in this case, I can see that all, out of all the indirect effects that I have for my data, there is only one indirect effect where the two groups are behaving differently, and it is over here and it involves my moderator because this is the interaction term that this is the path where the difference is statistically significant so this is what you need to report if you're reporting mga all the green values that okay these are the paths where the two groups are behaving differently you would need to report these and write your interpretation with reference to your significance values. If you want to add more depth to your interpretation, you can even report the green values that you have um, from these tables as well. That okay, if you look at this, these two rows, uh, the significance is difference, different. Like you know, if you look at these two indirect paths they are significant with one group but they are insignificant with the other so i it would be interesting to report that in which groups they are significant and where they are insignificant so this is how you can interpret them uh, the interpretation would be same as the way you write for your normal model but it's, it would be comparing the two groups so uh, in other words, we can also say that we are kind of uh, writing our analysis for mod multi-group moderation here. This is not a scalar uh, moderation, like we involve another variable to moderate the relationship. But here we are talking about the multi-group or dichotomous group moderation. So this is all what you need to do within your MGA analysis. Thank you.